Good evening, everyone. On the behalf of Team Dentist Channel Online, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. I am Dr. Aditi Vishra, and I'll be the host for today's session on the topic post extraction bleeding, the physiology, pathophysiology, and management by Dr. Nikita Maheshwit. So, before starting with the session, I have a few housekeeping notes to make. If you have any doubts during the session, you can put your questions in the question and answer box and we will be taking up each and every question at the end of the session. If you have joined us from Facebook and YouTube live, you can ask us questions by commenting and each and every question will be taken up at the end of the session. So uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce our today's speaker to everyone. Dr. Nikita Maheshwari is a dental surgeon from Bhilai Chhattisgarh. She has a clinical experience of three years from a private clinic and she has done a lot of webinars on clinical practice. So let's quickly understand what post-extraction bleeding is. Post-extraction bleeding is recognized frequently encountered complication in dental practice, which is defined as bleeding that continues beyond 8 to 12 hours after dental extraction. The incidence of post-extraction bleeding varies from 0% to 26%. If post-extraction bleeding is not managed, complications can range from soft tissue hematomas to se severe blood loss. Local causes of bleeding include soft tissue and bone bleeding. Systemat systemic causes include platelet problems, coagulation disorders, or excessive fibrinolysis and inherited or acquired problems which are medication in induced. There is a wide variety of techniques suggested for the treatment of post-extraction bleeding, which include interventions aimed at both local and systemic causes. So um, before starting, uh, before calling out our speaker, I would, I would like to quickly introduce our participants to our organization. Dental Channel Online uh, with the motto Healthy Smiles That Leads to Wealthy Lives. We have come up uh, with a brand new website www.dentalchannel.online. We request you to kindly log in and check out our website for all the latest updates regarding events, webinars and workshops. Uh, we are, you can find us on all the social platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, WhatsApp and Telegram. Dentist Channel Online is catering to academic, professional, and commercial needs of dental students, practitioners, organizations, businesses, and dental industry leaders. We offer several services and a variety of platforms all under one roof. These are a few services which we do. And being a Prime member, you can avail a lot of benefits. And one of it is you can receive you will be receiving e-certificate, which will be containing one FDA Germany CPD or CE point, which is exclusively for the prime member. The annual membership will cost you just 799 rupees. And uh, if you, you are using my promo code, which is ADT100, you can avail some discounts as well. For the latest updates, you can uh, save this number and send your text name as a text message on this number so that you are added to our broadcast list. And after that, you can uh, you will be receiving all the updates regarding our upcoming events. Hello, guys. Uh, good evening, doctor. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'll be. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we'll be starting. We'll be starting event in a uh, in few seconds. Uh, I'll be just uh, introducing my our participants uh, to the organization. Just a minute. So our sponsors are Nova Mind GmbH. Uh, innovate. They provide innovative dental and healthcare solutions to ensure your success. Uh, they have generic implants and prosthetic solutions. If you have missed out our live session, you can go back and watch our recorded videos on Facebook and YouTube using our handle Dental Channel On. So now it's time to welcome our uh, speaker, Dr. Nikita. Dr. Nikita, can you hear me? Dr. 
डॉक्टर निकिता के अंदर जाऊंगी मीन वाइल द स्पीकर कनेक्ट टू आर्स आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू काइंडली put your drop your questions if you have any doubts in the question and answer box so that we can uh, discuss it at the end of the session uh, dr nikita can you hear me hello yes i can hear you okay please, uh, you can start with the session Good evening, everyone. Is the screen visible? Yes, doctor. Okay. So uh, I am Dr. Nikita, and I am here to present you on the topic topic post extraction bleeding. Bleeding. So before we start with the topic, let us know something about hemostasis. So what do you mean by hemostasis? Hemo, we all know it is blood, and stasis is stopping of something. So hemostasis basically means stopping of blood. So it is a very natural process. It is a, a, a defensive mechanism of our body, physiological response to any injury. So hemostasis is a process to prevent and stop bleeding. so it keeps the blood within a damaged blood vessels it is the first stage of wound healing it is a very complex process which involves three sequential steps and it is a very rapid sequence so starting with a uh, starting with vascular vascular contraction constriction vascular spasm it is a brief and intense contraction of blood vessels as soon as the injury happens vascular constriction happens with the uh, with formation of platelet plug and then uh, blood clotting happens once blood flow has ceased tissue repair can begin so starting with the stage 1 of hemostasis that is vasoconstriction first we should know what does uh, what does vasoconstriction means so vasoconstriction means vasoconstriction of the damaged blood vessels occurs immediately after vascular injury mediated by the vascular smooth muscles and reduces blood loss from the damaged blood blood vessels so, sorry to interrupt you doctor can you make it full screen please mm, sure is it okay now hello it's not full screen um can you please try doing it full screen it's not full screen actually it's full screen on my side is it is it now okay uh yeah please go ahead so vasoconstriction so vasoconstriction of the damaged blood vessels vasoconstriction of the damaged blood vessels is uh, vasoconstriction is not sufficient to stop bleeding but it does have two important effects that is to reduce blood loss it reduces blood loss and it triggers to the second phase that is facilitates platelet addition okay 
So as soon as the injury happens, vasoconstriction, the blood vessels constricts, and it somehow somehow reduces the blood loss, giving way to platelet 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 plug formation. Platelet plug formation. Uh, with the second uh, zooming out to the second uh, stage, platelets create the platelet plug. that forms almost directly after the blood vessels has been ruptured within 20 seconds see within 20 seconds of an injury in which the blood vessels epithelial walls is disrupted coagulation is initiated it takes approximately approximately 60 seconds until the first fibrin strands begins to intersperse among the wound after several minutes the platelet plug is completely formed by fibrin so why do we need fibrin we need fibrin to form a uh, form a gel like structure which uh, forms coagulation cascade okay so with the fibrin the blood loss is stopped uh, uh, blood loss is stopped from the damaged area the activation of uh, platelets uh, means uh, that the platelets uh, the platelets need more and more platelet to form plug so that the blood loss is stopped from the area the clot works much like a cork or bottle stopper keeping the blood in and debris out with the stage 3 coagulation cascade it is more like this phase is characterized by a complex series of proteolytic reaction known as coagulation cascade the classical cascade comprises of two pathways extrinsic and intrinsic which in turn merge to form a common pathway so this is the clotting pathway which is also known as coagulation pathway the intrinsic starts with the factor 2l act with the activation of factor 2l and the extrinsic starts with uh, as soon as the tissue damage happens the factor 7 gets activated and they form a common pathway from where the fibrinogen is converted to fibrin through thrombin the intrinsic pathway as stated before the intrinsic pathway started by the activation of factor 2l through contact of the sub endothelial tissue in the damaged zone damaged zone the extrinsic extrinsic pathway in turn starts when the blood comes into contact with the tissue thromboblasting with activation of factor 7 so now we know what is hemostasis what is its mechanism and how does it work now we need to see what is hemorrhage so hemorrhage is something which is bleeding from a damaged blood vessel many things can cause hemorrhage inside and outside the body there can be uh, types of hemorrhage that range from a minor bruise to a severe severe bleeding uh, from a severe major uh, issue that can be from bleeding to the brain in the brain but in oral surgery hemorrhage can occur to a greater or lesser degree and its management depends on whether the patient is hematologically normal or is suffering from some, uh, or is suffering from disorders so what can be the causes of hemorrhage there can be local or systemic causes local ca cause can originate either from soft tissue or bone but the systemic uh, systemic hemorrhage occurs from hereditary conditions like uh, hemophilia can be from thrombocytopenia leukemia it can be from uncontrolled hypertension patients with the history of prosthetic heart valve replacement and patients on anticoagulants or antiplatelets so so local Cause, local originations are from soft and soft tissue and bone bleeding so soft tissue bleeding can be arterial venous or capillary so how would we differentiate the three types of bleeding arterial bleeding is like bright red and sputting it is very uh, spontaneous venous uh, venous blood is like dark red and flows steadily it is slow and steady uh, dark red color capillary blood is bright red but it is more of minimal oozing kind of so bone bleeding originates from nutrient canal in the alveolar region 
going to the types of hemorrhage it can be primary intermediate and secondary primary occurs during surgery as a result of injury like cutting or laceration it is very normal and can be controlled easily it occurs after a very short period of time immediately after injury but intermediate on the other hand occurs within few hours after injury it occurs due to failure of coagulation to occur this is the main th main uh, focus we would see on the next slides occurs in patients with systemic problems or anticoagulants secondary is somehow occurs 7 to 10 days after the surgery it is due to partial division of blood vessels in combination with the infection of the wound it is not frequently uh, encountered in oral surgery i'm sorry to interrupt doctor the slides are not sorry hello the, the slides are not moving okay so according to you we are on which slide according to me you are on hemostasis slide okay is it okay now yeah so we have seen types of hemorrhage now so types of hemorrhage primary intermediate secondary we now know primary is normal and can be controlled easily intermediate uh, occurs in patients with systemic problem with anticoagulants or antiplatelets secondary is somehow not encountered uh, uh, frequently in the oral surgery are the slide are the slides available hello aditi yes yes i can see that okay so management of hemorrhage how would we manage the hemorrhage now here we are starting with the topic post extraction bleeding or uh, bleeding during the surgical procedures so management of hemorrhage primary bleeding can be managed easily in the dental clinic like uh, using the pressure swab to achieve hemostasis ligation of blood vessels with silk suture uh, use of hemostatic agent like bone wax and surgery self intermediate is uh, bleeding from bone can be uh, achieved hemostatic hemostasis can be achieved through bone wax or gel foam and soft tissue can be done by cauterization of blood vessels along with hemostatic agent with suturing of wound now secondary bleeding is by if if it happens it can be done through removal of any debris or wounds uh, on the wound surface identify the source of bleeding and treat it surgical stents can be placed over ext extraction socket for stabilization of the clot so management of bleeding in patients with bleeding disorder and those with anticoagulants so how would we manage so first of all we need to identify the patient with bleeding disorder how can we do that we need to take history we need to do physical examination we can do laboratory investigation like cbc bt ct pt ptt everything so now bleeding time what is bleeding time time taken for a normal blood to stop bleeding normal bleeding time is 2 to 7 minutes it is usually prolonged in thrombocytopenia liver disease von willebrand's disease and etc clotting time time taken to first form the form the clot so normal clotting time is 5 to 8 minutes so prothrombin time it evaluates the extrinsic pathway and factor 1 2 5 7 and 10 normal pt is 11 to 13 seconds it is increased in patients on warfarin therapy vitamin k deficiency and end stage liver disease q 
patients with bleeding disorder and their management. So let us start with hemophilia. What happens during hemophilia? The clotting time of, uh, of the patient is increased and excessive bleeding tendency happens. Symptoms bruising. So now in the diagram, you can see non, uh, a healthy blood vessels and a hemophilic blood vessel. Sorry, ha. so healthy blood vessel and hemophilic blood vessels. In healthy blood vessels, uh, the clotting happens immediately, but in normal, uh, but in hemophilic, hemorrhage happens and there is inability to form the clot. So bleeding into uh, spontaneous bleeding happens, bleeding into joints and associated pain and swelling. Generalized spontaneous gingival bleeding happens, hematomas of tongue, heart palate, mucosa. Prolonged bleeding from extra extraction and surgery. So how can we manage hemophilic patients in dental clinic? During, before operating, what can we do? We, we must consult hematologists if the patient is in a severe condition. If mild to moderate case is, uh, is coming, you can treat uh, in the dental clinic with no problem. Severe cases can be treated in hospital. Replacement of factor 8 and factor 9, one hour before procedure, an acute infection to be treated with antibiotic therapy. So during, uh, hemo, uh, during uh, the uh, procedure, see what can be avoided is block anesthesia, lingual infiltration or inf injection in the floor of the mouth and intramuscular injections to be avoided. Infiltration and intraligamentary injections can be given without factor replacement. Orthodontic treatment, root canal without over instrumentation and polishing can be done easily. Periodontal surgery, root planning, dental alveolar surgery, extraction and complex oral surgery needs factor replacement and it can be done but in the uh, in hospital, uh, it can be done in a hospital. It cannot be done in a dental clinic. So post-operative, avoid aspirin, aspirin-containing compounds and other NSAIDs. Acetaminophen with or without codin is suggested. Management of, now we are heading to the management of patients with uh, anticoagulants. So uh, patients with anticoagulants can be given pomerin derivatives or indadion, indadion derivatives. Patients treated with anti-vitamin K coagulants require periodic monitoring based on the prothrombin time. Since the parameter is somewhat imprecise, we use INR, International Normalized Ratio. So it is the proportion between patient's prothrombin time and the controlled prothrombin time, which is currently advised. The recommended anticoagulant levels vary between INR 2 to 3 for all indications, with the exception patients with heart valve implants, uh, the INR should be maintained between 2.5 to 3.5. So if the patient is on anticoagulant and the INR is taken on the same day, if it is normal, 2 to 3.5, then minor interventions can be done without altering the oral anticoagulant. But if we need to do major intervention, we need to suspend the pattern of uh, oral anticoagulant before 2 to 3 days. Priorly, we need to stop the oral anticoagulants. And if at all it is not uh, 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 suggested by the uh, doctors, so we can replace the OAC by low molecular weight uh, heparin and we can reset the OAC after 12 hours of the treatment procedure. And if the INR is done on the same day and it is altered more than 3.5 INR has been coming, then we need to postpone the intervention or we can do the same thing, replace the OAC with low molecular weight, uh, uh, low molecular weight heparin and we need to uh, reset it after 12 hours. Okay. So management of patients with antiplatelets, what we need to do is antiplatelets drug are generally prescribed for the prevention where uh, 
prevention of arterial and venous thrombosis in patients with ischemic heart disease, heart valve implants and stents, and in people at risk of suffering cerebrovascular events such as stroke. So what can we do? Uh, if the patient is on antiplatelet, we can uh, prescribe and, uh, acetyl salicylic acid or clopidogrel bisulfate. For vitamin K deficiency, since vitamin K has important role as they stimulate the vitamin K dependent clotting factors, that is 2, 7, 10 and 11, due to vitamin K1 or K2 deficiency or both. What symptoms happen? Bruising, petechia, hematomas, oozing of blood at surgical or puncture sites. How do we manage this? <clears throat> we manage this with, with fresh frozen plasma infusion, desmopressin therapy, antifibrinolytic agent, supplemental vitamin K injections, and we need to ch uh, check the PT, BT, CT, everything before surgical process starts. So what are the post-operative instructions given to the patients after extraction? So we need, uh, we tell them to apply pressure with a piece of gauze for 30 to 40 minutes, avoid oral rinse during the first 24 hours, follow a soft and cold diet during the first 24 hours, avoid suctioning movement, avoid touching the socket region with tongue. The adoption of adequate hemostatic measures is the key to not having to modify the antiplatelet or anticoagulant treatment. The adoption antiplatelet or anticoagulation treatment in most cases. So uh, for many, we give tranexamic acid as tablets also, and we can give them a post-operative rinse to stabilize the blood clot since it, it inhibits plasminogen activation and fibrinolysis and appear to have few side effects. So it is advised twice a day during the first 48 hours. Other widely used hemostatic agents are intraalveolar oxidized cellulose, that is surgicel, reabsorbable collagen sponges, fibrin adhesive or tissue adhesives, or of course, sutures. So with the conclusion, all I need to say is, First of all, we need to diagnose with uh, diagnose the patient with proper history, clinical examination, and lab test. After that, we need to identify if at all the patient is having bleeding disorder. We need to identify the patient with bleeding disorder and then treat the patient carefully with proper procedures. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor, for this amazing presentation. I request all the participants to kindly uh, put your questions in the question and answer box if you have any. If anyone have any question, they can put up in their uh, question and answer session. Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, I request uh, all the participants, if you want to receive an e-certificate for this webinar, you can put up, uh, you can subscribe to our prime membership, which will be cost, the annual prime membership will be costing you 799 rupees. And uh, if you use my promo code ADT100, which I have provided in the chat box as well. So uh, with that, you can avail a discount. So uh, after that, uh, you will be receiving one e-certificate. So, uh, uh, doctor, we have received one question from Dr. Selesh. He's asking, transamic acid mouthwash, what's the brand name and instructions for use? Dr. Nikita, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, so we have received one question from uh, Dr. Shelley. She's asking, transamic acid mouthwash, what was the brand name and uh, what are the instructions for use? Okay, so you can use Mucobens uh, brand name. It is available in India and it is it should be used uh, after 24 hours for uh, uh, two times, uh, 48 hours. It can be used 48 hours after and for two times daily. 
basically we are not promoting any brand uh, we are just sharing yeah. that uh, with our own experience with our own clinical experience we are uh, just suggesting that uh, this could be one and uh, if you are coming up with something better please go ahead okay yeah. <laughs> so all right thank you so much dr nikita for uh, joining us for this amazing session uh, i hope all the doubts and everything has been got cleared uh, crystal cleared with all our participants thank you so much for uh, being with us Thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you to all these uh, participants. Uh, with this, we'll be ending today's session. Thank you and have a great evening ahead.